Just recently, I released the Mecharoach for my 2,000 subscriber special. Now, I got a 3,000 subscriber special coming up soon. It's actually going pretty fast. Thank you so much to everyone who likes and subscribes. It does a lot. You have no idea. So, as a way to say thank you, not only did I recently release the Mecharoach on the channel and give it to everyone for free, plus have a really detailed guide for it, today, I actually have to take apart my Sea Dragon. And I thought, well, okay, I can't completely break it down and show you from the ground up build. But to be honest, everything that's right here is pretty simple. And what I'm about to do is the complicated part. So I thought, hey, I should show you guys that. But also, today I spent a long time making this pretty cool graphic I'll put up on the screen. And then, of course, that means I'm going to make a detailed guide on my website with links to everything so you don't have to go hunting them down on Amazon yourself. So buckle up, get out your notebook, and uh, let's get into it. Okay, I'm going to point out a couple things here. Now, as you can see, the air unit is connected to the flight stack, and this cable's a little bit too long, so I'm going to give it a couple more twists just to keep it in place. There we go. That ought to do it. Make sure that you have the orientation right of the JST pins. All right, let's plug that in there. Okay, the crossfire is right here, flopping over there. Oh, gosh. Hey, get where you need to go. The crossfire is right here, and this is going to be going out the back, and I can actually twist this up now so that I have it open. The GPS will actually go up onto the frame. That's the one thing that stops you from taking the top off, uh, but it's just there's no other way to do it because you need the GPS to be up on the top. Right here is a little USB micro connector, and it's just the way I can do it since this doesn't have a breakaway USB cable. Unfortunately, I had to use this right here, but it, hey, it worked. The flight stack is just like the Mecharoach. It's screwed in right here, and we're gonna screw that in right now. We actually got to flip it over because I, I played with the idea of taking it all apart. But as I was kind of doing that, I realized this would just be a huge task. And fortunately, I actually have a job coming up. I'll actually just wait to talk until I'm done screwing all this in. Um, this capacitor right here, uh, I realized, like, this needs to be as short as humanly possible. And as you can see here, it's actually longer than it needs to be. And that's kind of a problem rather than on the battery leads, because those battery leads can be a real pain in the butt. Oh yeah, I forgot to address the elephant in the room, or should I say the Oompa Loompa. As you can see, I'm pretty orange. Don't worry, I'm gonna fix that. I didn't have time to fix it today. It's just because this old camera doesn't actually have the ability to manually set the Calvin. So I'm just kind of left being really orange. Yeah, you want these to be just as short as humanly possible. Okay, there we go, that's good. And I definitely recommend you get a lot of the stuff that I linked to. It's absolutely fantastic really good stuff all right so as you can see i have this right here uh the gopro mount that was kind of hard to get in you kind of have to jimmy your jimmy it in because it sits in between everything i wanted the gopro to be really like robust so here it sits so you can see here i actually have two heat sinks on the air unit one on the top and one on the bottom and that by the way that's actually the main reason why i've taken this apart today because i had to redesign the air vents back the way the Mecharoach was. I had them turned around and, and it was a theoretically that negative pressure would suck the air out. It, it just didn't work good enough. And yeah, yes, it's 40 degrees right now out, 40 C, but this thing was overheating even when I was flying really fast. Like when I got it back and it landed, I touched it against my lip and it actually burnt my lip a little bit. It still kind of hurts. So that was what was happening with my air unit. That's no bueno. We definitely got to fix that. You can use self-tapping screws right here because this isn't like, a structural hold it's more of just kind of keeping it from rotating left and right um, this actually is wrapped around a standoff so it's not going anywhere everything's a bit self-explanatory except when it comes to the top now we're going to put this aside here and this is where things get a little complicated because i took it off the other one but basically what you would do is you would slot all of these in like this and glue them one at a time because i can't really glue them i guess i, I I guess I'm gonna have to glue them one at a time. It's kind of a pain in the butt, that's for sure. Um, the best way to glue them, I would say, once you make sure you have it right, is just put some E7000 like all along it. Now, taking this off, it was like on there. I basically had to destroy the top to get this off. So I can say that you probably don't have to worry too much about like really getting a lot of glue on this. They might even stay without any glue at all. Uh, but they're not going to be taking a lot of the impact of a crash in that direction. And even if they do kind of come off, that's, that's kind of a good thing. Because if you crash so hard that it would want to come off 
and it like you know it rips the glue off and it comes out that's going to absorb a lot of that impact and it may actually serve you by providing the rest of your quad kind of some impact resistance sort of like the hood of your car crumpling and protecting the passengers inside you can think about these things as a way to protect the internals of your drone by crumpling instead of breaking now, i think yeah that just came off i just kind of ripped the uh the wires off there unfortunately i was not really paying attention but that's okay take that wire off there we go okay all right now let's uh finish gluing these up okay and they should just fit in really nice it's a very satisfying fit kind of snaps in there and that's what it should look like now i kind of goofed off and i forgot i needed to put the gps up in here first whoops let me take that out real fast there we go Jeez, with how tight of a fit that is i think the gps would sit in there just fine without anything put a little bit more e7000 on this and now i can lay it over the top If I were to do this again, I would make this just longer so that it goes around the GPS some because there's no need to like have it over top. It's kind of dumb. Here's the GPS holder. That's on. And that's your GPS. LEDs plug in right here on the Hack RC 50 amp AIO. It's pretty awesome. But before we do that, we actually have to glue our headlights on. And they kind of go a little bit different. They come in from the front here. I don't see any need to put E7000 on the actual headlights anymore because they're locked in there as soon as you glue it on. Put some E7000 directly on the LEDs and then just kind of push these in. They should snap right in. Very satisfying, if I don't say so myself. They snap right in. And you might have to hold them for a few seconds just to make sure that they're in there. This is definitely the most annoying part about this whole build. This is right here. And maybe I should have done this before I did the GPS so that I wasn't bound by this cable. These are pretty stiff, but they do add quite a lot of structure, which is really good. And it does matter what the orientation is. You want to point them kind of outward like that. Okay, and then shove that in there. And that's what's really great about these. Oh, this is not all the way in. There we go. Shove this in. It's like once you don't actually need any glue or anything, when you get these in there, they're in there. Oh, never had these come out. The hard part, obviously, is going to be this right here. This, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, this is not fun. There's nothing about this that's fun. This is like the absolute worst, I can tell you that right now, is getting these things plugged in. Um, it's a lot easier if the air unit's outside. <sighs> okay, now once that first one's in, you want to start positioning the other one, but be careful because you don't want to accidentally knock the other one out now once they're in you want to carefully get the top plate and if you don't have these guys your life is just absolutely miserable i think so get them okay and once that top plate's on where it needs to be you're going to want to then grab one of the screws screw it in right there This right here is the most difficult and annoying part of the whole build. But luckily, you'll develop a certain technique with it. If I wasn't with you guys right now, thinking about the camera and stuff like that, this would be a lot easier. Pretty much done. Run up the GoPro uh, power connector through this little section right here. And this is where it is a little bit tricky. You'll have, there's a certain technique to it, but you have to like 
Let me try to show you here. You have to like um, like lift this up and slot that down in there and wiggle it around. And then eventually, once you get your, your uh, antenna cable going the right way, so it's not pressing up against it, it should sit down really nicely. And just visually inspect, make sure nothing is um, kind of smashing. And I can see here, my crossfire wire is getting kind of smashed by the middle stack. And then once you kind of get it, wiggle it back and forth, just kind of make sure that there's no wires rubbing against it because you don't want to go screwing anything in and like chopping some wires. But there we go, that feels really good now. Now, once that's in here, the first screw you want to use is the screw back here. And this is a long screw. So there's one here that's longer than the rest, and that's this one right here. Drop that in, and then screw it. But just double check one more time. Make sure that it's not squishing any wires. Okay, looking good. And then... There we go. You're out of, you're out of the woods. This is the pretty much just screw everything in now. And uh, you don't have to worry too much about anything. Just kind of push this up through those little vents there. There you go. And you can just push this in here. You don't actually need any glue on this. This will stay right where it belongs. It's not structural. So yeah, this kind of just keeps the cable, just a little bit of tension on the cable there so it won't wiggle around. It, it does, it's not really long enough to wiggle around anyways, but yeah, you can actually even push it in just a little bit. There you go. Okay. Whew, look at that. What an absolute beaut she is. I really love this color. Uh, this is actually shout out to a company that's not Polymaker. Now, don't worry, Polymaker. I'm not abandoning you, but there was a Chinese company that saw some of my videos and wanted me to try out some of their filament. I'm really impressed by it. I haven't printed actual prop guards yet from it. I just printed it for the top frame. It printed beautifully, and it seems pretty strong, so I'm very happy with it. Uh, I won't be abandoning Polymaker mostly because I'm a loyal guy. I've actually considered leaving these little side arms off for just more airflow, and I might end up doing that. Uh, luckily, you know, this E7000, you could rip it off. It's not going to break your, your PLA. Um, it keeps it on just enough, uh, but if you really want to get it off, you kind of just grab a corner and rip it off. And voila, you're done. Look at that. Now, okay, guys, I'm going to turn off a lot of the lights, and let's see what this thing looks like. Never play around. Anytime you open up your drone, you definitely want to use uh, a smoke stopper. Who knows, you might have just made one tiny little mistake that could be easily fixed, but if you don't use a smoke stopper, a tiny mistake turns into a big mistake. You don't want that. Trust me, it's happened to me, and that's why I use these things religiously. Anytime my drone gets opened, this goes on. There we go, look at that, boys. Absolutely gorgeous. Now you could change the colors to your liking just fine, but I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now. Absolutely beautiful drone. This thing, when this thing flies around, man, it's just, meow, like a little, <laughs> look at that. That is so cool. That is super cool, guys. There it is. This is the Sea Dragon. She's an absolute beaut, and she flies better than any drone I've ever flown before. I'm a cinematic kind of guy. I don't really care so much about freestyle, but this thing can do power loops and split S's. Without the GoPro on it, it can do it like it's nothing. If you put the GoPro on it, you're gonna feel a little bit. I'm very proud of this drone. I hope you guys enjoy too. Build it yourself. Now it's out there in the wild. It's free to build. Guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Definitely consider supporting me on Patreon, helping me keep this content flowing and keeping things coming for free. Love you guys. Dr. Quads, catch you next time.